good evening and or good afternoon. I know I say that all the time, but the fact is there's people watching everywhere from Thailand and Japan to uh, the West Coast and the East Coast of America and South America. So good evening and good day and whatever and wherever you are. Welcome to the Odo Dracul event offices in our offices here in Northern Transylvania in Romania. We wanted to have ongoing talks and uh, try to describe to you um, the dynamics and why we're doing what we're doing with groups, uh, with work, our work with people, um, on the ride up and around uh, these northern parts as we're meeting with uh, monks and priests in different orders. Uh, we wanted to talk and, and reveal to you why we're doing what we're doing, which we've done for some time. You know, but now, you know, in the course of this, as we're talking about exorcisms and about spiritual protection and about working with people and uh, communities and groups all around the world, um, the subject of meditation, ritual, and magic keep coming up. And, and it keeps coming up from religious communities as well, mainstream. You know, we're not talking just about Catholic communities, about Catholic, about uh, it's, uh, Orthodox communities, um, and about different spiritual communities that we're being approached by and approached from. So, and yes, we've taken a lot of emphasis on meditation, and, we, uh, and for obvious reasons to those who've spent a lot of time uh, practicing magical arts, and you know, and we wanted to take a little bit of time to describe to you exactly why we're doing what we're doing and why we're encouraging you to engage this more as you work your magic. In ritual and meditation, um, the core of all that we seek to do is to align our mind with our spirit and our soul, to align us to whether it be in prayer or um, or some kind of mindful activity um, in a in a meditative sense, we're looking to align ourselves in our spirit to our intent and the meaning behind what we want to do and what we wish to do. What do you seek? What does anybody seek as they engage in meditation? Um, well, it's the same as what they seek in their magic, usually. Magic is an expression of our greatest desires, just like prayer for any belief system. Uh, the magic we perform, the magic anyone performs, is aligned to the greatest wants and their greatest intents with the greatest yearning of their soul and of their spirit. Why is meditation so important to this? Well, think in terms of ritual. And I want to talk a moment about that. A ritual to anyone in any faith, um, be it a Sunday service in a Catholic church or an Orthodox church, um, if you're a Hebrew or if, uh, if you're Shinto in Japan or whatever, um, any service you attend is a ritual. The ritual, the form of a ritual exists to align us, to align our spirit, to align our intents with where we wish to be, the greatest aim of how we wish to exist at, to vibrate at, to bring our essence to. Well, meditation is an inner ritual. That's it. You know, meditation is, is seeking to unlock gates within ourselves. It's seeking to raise up our vibration to a higher level than we have existed at. Now, I gotta be honest, you know, a lot of people I've spoken with and worked with, and a lot of people Andreas has worked with, and other uh, priests and high priests in the order, um, you know, we come across people who say, I can't meditate, I can't meditate. And literally they can do 60 seconds, and then they wake up, and they stand up. Um, and <laughs> You know, it would be at three minutes, five minutes, that's it. And instead of focusing on 
what's like we did in the last meditation we just presented, which is why we're doing meditations now, progressively as we are. We're trying to work with people on not being so afraid of their thoughts. You know, don't be afraid of your thoughts. Your thoughts simply are you. That's all you are. You know who you are. I know who I am. And our thoughts are an expression of who we are. So meditation isn't about getting rid of your thoughts. It's not about getting rid of your intent. That's the last thing you want to do. What you want to do is to understand and to recognize and to accept or to let go of what you seek to not be. That's the inner ritual of meditation. The ultimate aim of it is, yes, of course, to raise our vibration. Um, the definition of the vampire, you know, is the same as the definition for anybody. I mean, I was chatting with a mainstream uh, religious representative just a couple of days ago, and we were talking about vampires. And so I got news. Everybody's a vampire. There's controversy for some people. Everybody exchanges energy. Everybody takes it in. Everybody uses it. Um, the question is, where do you vibrate? Where do you exist? Where do you seek to exist? What do you seek to do with yourself? What does your magic do? What do you seek to do with your magic? Do you seek to hurt people? Do you seek to get rich? Do you seek to screw over your neighbor? To lay curses? If you're performing your magic to lay curses, then that's it. Good luck. Don't come near me. It's a, or anybody I know. That's not the kind of magic we practice. I'm not saying curses don't have their use, but it's like that's not the purpose of magic. And it's not the purpose of meditation. Um, you know, I meditation in its purest form unlocks gates within ourselves. It raises our inner vibration levels, just like music. You know, music, I've heard so many times that, oh, I went to this concert and I felt a thousand times better. I felt like I was up in the clouds. Or sometimes you'll have your headphones on and you talk to, oh, you know, this happened to me. You just, you feel a hundred times better after you've listened to all this music and your body and your essence is vibrating with the music. Why? Musical tone alter cellular function. It's a physical fact. I heard a story a long time ago about um, old religious orders in the Middle Ages where they knew secrets of healing based upon the tonal qualities of do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do. There was a time when they would have cut this broadcast off the internet for me even saying that. It's true. They were Catholic orders. Benedictine, I believe, monks, but don't quote me on that, the Bene either Benedictine or Francine, but the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, di, do, tonal qualities have a healing quality to cellular function and variations of that. Well, that's how music exists. Now, and, that, and that's the effect of music on our bodies and our mind and our soul and our essence. Well, meditation is the seeking to do the same thing on a spiritual and soulful level to raise up our vibrations. What's the ultimate aim? To seek to connect with the ultimate of what is, the center of all things, as Nikola Tesla described it. He was certain that at the core of everything, there is a central intelligence to all of the universe. And he was absolutely sure of it, and he was sure he was in connection with it. Just like Albert Einstein, I've said this before, and others like this. And so I'm not saying that, you know, you should seek to connect with that if that's not what you want. But the whole point is, meditation, what? Why? Why do it? To open your magic to yourself. To open yourself to yourself. To better align yourself with who you are. And to seek to vibrate with the highest and the greatest force that you see within yourself as being at the center of all things. You define that. This is why we meditate. And this is what we're seeking to do with people now. 
we're talking onward, we're having very deep and hard discussions about exorcism and about demonic forces and about dark forces and dark entities. I mean, if you read some of my writings, you know, if you buy books like The Devil's Bible that Andreas and I wrote um, and other books, we write about this stuff. And yes, there are dark entities out there. There's no doubt about it. We all know that. Catholic Church and other churches define them as demonic or whatever. Um, when to do battle with and to work against these forces, you need to be in touch with yourself. And you need to be a person who has an inner vibration that seeks a higher rate in a higher state of being with the center of all things. Be it, you call that God, gods, goddesses, whatever, the dragon, that's your choice. This is meditation. This is, and how does this augment magic? It unlocks the gates we have within ourselves and lets us get to know ourselves intimately. What happens with magic when we do that? It explodes. Our magic comes into our fingers and we reach into the flame. We hold the flame within our hands. That's the purpose of meditation. That's why we're doing what we're doing. We're trying to help people. We're trying to help you. We're trying to help ourselves. As we help others, we help ourselves. So, um, we're going to have ongoing discussions about these things. We invite you to come meditate with us in our Ordo Dracul uh, meditations group, and we're doing it elsewhere. We're going to be running events all around the world. We're going to be doing Europe. Uh, we're coming to America. I keep saying it. We're coming to America, and events will be there. Um, so we invite you to engage us, uh, talk to us. Come see us in our academy group. If you want to join the academy, want to hop in, we'd love to have you. Um, but the purpose of this is to help. And in helping you, we help ourselves. And that's how the quid pro quo works. So here we are in the offices again, and it's cold. <laughs> It's winter time, like it is where you are, if, uh, unless you're in the southern hemisphere. Um, fires are going, we're drinking warm cider and coffee, and we're having a good time. In fact, we're having a great time. This is what we were meant to do. You do it too. Have a great day.